your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the plays and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, are we late? No, we've got plenty of time. The train leaves at 5.15. It's just two and a half minutes after five, and for once, we don't have to break our necks. Isn't it marvelous not having to be late so we don't have to hurry? Oh, I love stations. Well, come on, darling. Try to keep up with me. We don't have to rush, David. We're way early. Where are we going now? Don't you remember? Reggie told us to meet him at the information booth. He hasn't come yet. Better hurry or he'll be late. It is wonderful to be on time once, doesn't it? Mm, smug. David, do you think there's another information booth in the station? If there is, I don't care. Don't you? No. I mean, maybe we should be waiting at the information booth that goes to Long Island. Well, that would be on the lower level with the Long Island trains. Do you think maybe that's where... No, Reggie... I don't. This is the main information booth. Reggie said at the information booth, and this is where we shall wait for All it. right, if you say so, but I still think... Say, David, I just had a thought. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. When you say upper level and lower level, does that mean that there are some trains that come into the station upwards and some downstairs? That's the general idea. I see. What do you know? Very little. Just because a train is a Long Island train, it knows to come in the Long Island level. I think that's miraculous. It's like the talking horse. Are you serious? Hmm, a little bit. I wish Reggie would come. He'll I... be along. That is, if we're waiting for him in the right place. I don't keep saying it. Of course it's the right place. I suppose it is. After all, there are lots of other people waiting for other people here, too. David, why can't we go places more often? Where would you like to go? Oh, any place. Stations are so exciting. Say, I forgot. I, I've, I've got to go buy the tickets. Why did you go now? And leave you alone in the middle of a railroad station? I know better. I'm not quite ready to lose you forever, darling. Oh, that's sweet, David. That's one of the sweetest things you ever said to me. Well, I didn't mean it that way. You didn't? But I hope Reggie comes in time for me to buy the tickets in the station. I don't like buying tickets on a train. You can buy tickets on the train? Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. It's not wonderful. It's sloppy. What's sloppy about it? Well, they have ticket offices in the station just so people will buy their tickets before they get on the train. Then why do they sell them on the train? Only for people who haven't organized themselves so they have time to buy their tickets before. But I don't think the train minds, or they just wouldn't allow it at all. They do mind. Why? Because it complicates their bookkeeping. I don't see how anything could complicate their bookkeeping. So complicated already. How do you know? How on earth do they ever keep track of all the little tickets they sell? And all the pennies they get? Well, they get a great big Every bag. Every ticket and... costs 97 cents. Depends on where you're going. Or 43 going. cents. Or 66 cents. Give me one Why of your tickets. tickets cost... David, are you listening to I'm, me? I'm listening. I'm listening. Why can't tickets cost nice round numbers? You mean like a dollar? It's so simple. And the tickets, they punch them here, they punch them there, they tear them in half. Somebody else gives you something else that you stick on the back of your chair. But we haven't gotten a chair yet. We have to get and on the... And then somebody else comes along and picks it up. What? Oh, so you'd think there was a simpler way of doing it. When you think of it, write the president of the Pennsylvania Railroad. I'm sure he'd be very glad to hear from you. I'm sure he will, too. I'll do it darn, tonight. Darn, darn, Richard. It's, it's my fault. I should have known better than to try to meet someone in a station. Darling, I hate to say anything. You think maybe we are waiting at the wrong information desk? We are waiting at the right one. Reggie is at the other one. He's at the wrong. Do you want me to go and see? I do not. You'll get lost. It's only just downstairs, you said, Well, I'll I'll go and see if that's where Reggie is. Don't get lost. Now, don't you dare move from here, darling, or we'll never get together again. Oh, David, be careful. Don't get on a train by mistake. I'll do my best. Now, Now, stay right there. You forgot something. What is it, darling? You forgot to say goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, darling. Have a nice trip. Darling, look, not here in front of all these people. This is a railroad station, David. I thought that's what railroad stations were for. Well, railroad stations are for trains, not for kissing people goodbye. Oh. However, goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Be good while I'm gone. I'll miss you. Goodbye. And remember, don't move. I'll be right back. Oops, mm-hmm. oops. Young oh, lady. I am sorry. Beg your pardon. Claudia. Mm-hmm. Oh, Claudia, there oh, you Reggie. are. Oh, Reggie. 
We've been waiting for you. Well, I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting ten whole minutes. You have where? Downstairs. The information booth. Long Island trains. Downstairs. Is that the lower level? It is. Oh, I told David. David? Well, where is David? He's gone downstairs looking for you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, what made him do that? Well, I, I think it was very intelligent of him. After all, you were downstairs waiting for him, weren't you? But I'm not anymore. I'm up here with you. Well, that is not David's fault. Anyway, he said he'll be right back up. Come, Claudia. We'll go and meet David downstairs. Oh, I have promised David I'd stay here. You go down by those stairs over there, and I'll go down by these stairs over here. That way, with David on his way up, he'll meet one of us. Reggie, that's brilliant. If only it works that way. Pennsylvania Railroad announces the arrival of train number 85 from Africa. Information booth, Long Island trains. This must be it. Well, Claudia, here I am. And here I am, Reggie. Isn't it wonderful? Here we both are. Miraculous. Neither of us got lost. Well, these things aren't as complicated as they seem after all, <laughs> are they? Except David isn't here. He isn't, but he should be. He isn't. I didn't see him, did you? Did you pass him on the stairs? Nope. I looked at every man, but none of them was David. I looked too, but no David. I thought surely you'd got him. Where do you suppose he went? Search me. Oh, poor David. He's probably standing upstairs wondering what on earth happened to me. He's probably worried sick. Reggie, I'd better go up and look for him. Don't you dare move, Claudia. Why not? Didn't David tell you to stay where you were? Yes. But this isn't where I were. Just the same. Don't move. I shall go and look for David. Oh, why does everybody tell me not to move? Reggie, weren't you supposed to meet Madame Dubois here? Well, she knows exactly where to meet me. Now, Claudia, you stay here. I'll be right back with David in tow. I hope so. It's getting late, and you said we've got to make the 5.15. Mm. Um, Darling, um, bum, bum. what are you doing here? I told you to stay upstairs. Oh, David, I'm so glad you got back. Did you have a nice trip? Well, what are you doing here? Darling, I found Reggie. Where? Up there. He came upstairs right after you left. So we decided to come down here. Oh, good heavens. That's what I get for traveling with a woman. I'm not a woman. I'm your wife. David, it's your fault anyway. How'd you get upstairs without us seeing you? I took the escalator. Escalator? I didn't know there was one, and I love escalators. Can I... No. Now, where's Reggie now? Well, he went upstairs to look for you, of course. He what? Why can't you people stay in one place for two minutes at a time so a person can find you? Why didn't you stay somewhere for two minutes so we could find you? Because I thought I was the one who was doing the looking. Well, anyway, darling, we'll stay here now because Reggie's coming back to find me after he's found you. Only, of course, I found you first. Hello. Hello. You didn't tell me if you had a nice trip. Did you miss me? I certainly did. Well, it looks like we're going to miss the 515, <gasps> too. It does. That's terrible. What'll we do? Probably have to hang around the station for an hour and a half or another train. Well, it's a good thing I love stations, isn't it? But anyway, if we do miss the train, it still might not be our fault. Because Reggie's mother's friend, she's a French woman, David. She hasn't arrived yet. Women. Why do women always have to be late? It's just a coincidence that she's a woman. After all, there are only two possibilities. And I wasn't late. And she isn't late yet. She won't be anyway. Reggie says she never is. What time is it? No. Five... 5.14. Oh, isn't going away fun? We should really do it more often. And go further away to make it worthwhile. You're having a good time, aren't you, David? <laughs> Not bad. This sort of thing is to be expected when you go traveling with a wife. I'll, I'll get used to it. I hope so, because from now on we're going to go away a lot, aren't we, David? Every time we go up to the farm, we'll be going away. And every time we go to New York from the farm, we'll be going away. <laughs> and I love traveling. Marco Polo. <laughs> I wonder where Reggie is now. Maybe you're right. Maybe we'd better go and find him. Anyway, there's nobody around here who looks like a French woman. Not even the poodle. Darling, don't you want to stay down here while I go look for Reggie? I do not. Wherever we go, we're going together from now on. That's why I married you. Well, I'm dead. Hello, David. So you're here, not upstairs. Hello, Reggie. Really, David, you are the most difficult person to locate. No, we shall never make that 5.15. Never. Oh, it's going to cause a terrible mix-up at home. Mother always expects me, and oh, well, I'm throwing in the towel. 
I don't care if we never get there. Such mobs, such difficulties. Yes, I've, I've just been through it. I, I know exactly how you feel. Where's Jeanette? I don't know. Isn't she here? She ought to be here. She always is. What's the use? Let's see what time it is again. Oh, it's now 5.15. Uh-uh. Well, well. Well, I guess that's that. I guess we have missed the train. Oh, that's terrible. But it's not our fault, is it, Reggie? We were running around waiting with nothing to do. Plenty of time. Reggie! Oh, Reggie! Oh, I'm so terribly sorry I'm late. That awful taxi man roamed me all around New York. Hello, Janet. That's all right. Uh, Madame Dubois, Mr. and Mrs. Norton. Hello, Madame Dubois. Mm, very happy to meet you. Uh, bonjour, bonjour. Charmé, terribly sorry about the train. Oh, that's all right. That gives me time to go and ride the escalator. I'll be right back, David. Well, I suppose we'll just have to wait around for the next one. And then there'll be the chauffeur waiting and dinner late. And, oh, really, I do hate these confusions. Well, so do I. I was running up and down these steps here for at least ten minutes. <laughs> Say, uh, tell me, uh, uh, Reggie, mm -hmm. what time is the next train? It's not a point of when the next train is. I've always taken the 5.15, and I have yet to wait. For Say, it. enough talking. We better go quick. The next train is the 5.19. The 5.19? The five... Not, let's see, that only gives it... Wait just a minute. Claudia! Wait a minute. I'll have to look for Claudia. Where'd she go? Now, uh, Claudia! Yeah. Claudia! Have you seen her? Which way did she go? Claudia, come back here! Claudia, hurry! Uh, where are we? Oh, where, dear. She's gone. Where's she? Now, where I, th I think she said something gone, about so. escalators. Oh, Claudia! Claudia! She's gone. <laughs> gone. Yeah. Reggie, tell me. When is the next train after the next train? Hmm? Put in a carton of Coke, you say to the grocer, while another customer is saying, I want a case of Coca-Cola. Both of you are asking for the same thing. Both are trademarks of the Coca-Cola company. Ask for either, and you get delicious, wholesome refreshment. You get the drink that gives you, your family, and your guests the pause that refreshes. Well, Mr. King, we didn't make it. Uh, not even the 519, Mr. Finch? Not even. Claudia is so very fond of escalators. As a matter of fact, you know, I have rather a good time on them myself. Oh, don't we all? Because we like something for nothing. On an escalator, you go upstairs, on stairs, at no effort whatsoever. But they're still something of a toy, aren't they? And all grown-up love toys. Electric trains, especially. I hope Claudia and David will buy an electric train for their expected child soon, so I can have a whack at it. Well, they're going to buy him something, but I don't know exactly what it is on Monday. Come around then, Mr. Finch. You'll find out. I'll be there. Well, now, I'd better rush along or I'll also miss the 603. Goodbye, Mr. King. Have a nice weekend. Same to you, Mr. Finch. Goodbye. And uh, as I was saying, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember... Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause, the pause that refreshes. These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.